All right, let's talk about a choice that's going to echo for the next half century. India is standing at a massive fork in the road, trying to decide between Russia's top-tier fighter and America's. And let me tell you, this isn't just about buying a new jet. This is about defining who holds power in the skies for decades to come. Hey everyone, welcome to the Global War Watch Network. Before we jump in, if you're into tracking these kinds of high-stakes defense decisions, do us a solid and hit that subscribe button right now. You are not going to want to miss what we have coming up. So just let that sink in for a minute. Russia has basically put an offer on the table that says, let's build a cutting edge fighter together and we need an answer by 2030. I mean, wow. This is the kind of move that could completely redraw the map of air power across all of Asia. It's a huge deal. Okay, so why is this offer hitting the table right now with such urgency? Well, to really get why this is such a critical decision for India, you first have to understand the serious, and I mean serious, pressure they're under. This isn't just some routine upgrade cycle. We are talking about a genuine crisis for their Air Force. Just take a look at these numbers. The Indian Air Force is supposed to have, let's call it, 42 and a half squadrons ready to go at a moment's notice. But right now, they're operating with just 31. That is the lowest number they've had in 60 years, and it's happening at a time when, to put it mildly, things in their neighborhood are really heating up. And here's what makes that shortfall so dangerous. You've got China right next door, pumping out its advanced J-20 stealth fighters. On top of that, their close ally Pakistan is expected to get its hands on fifth-generation jets as well. And what's India's top gun? The French Rafale. Now, don't get me wrong. The Rafale is a fantastic 4.5-generation jet, but it's not in the same stealth league. That capability gap, it's not just widening, it's quickly becoming a chasm. So the question is, how does India solve this problem? Well, option number one comes from a very old and very strategic partner. Russia has come back to the table, and this time, they've brought an offer that is so ambitious, it seems like it's designed to be almost impossible to refuse. And the centerpiece of this entire deal? It's the Sukhoi Su-57, or as NATO calls it, the Felon. This is Russia's answer to the American F-22 and F-35. It's a twin-engine beast built to own the skies, hit targets deep in enemy territory, and do it all with a stealthy profile. So what makes this golden deal so golden? Well, let's just break it down. First, Russia says, we'll give you a batch of jets right now in just three to four years to fix your squadron problem. Check. Second, you can build the rest of them right there in India, a huge win for their domestic industry. But here are the real kickers, points three and four. They're offering full technology transfer, the source codes, the critical tech, all of it. And India gets to plug its own homegrown missiles and bombs right in. You just don't get that kind of an offer from the West, period. And get this, this isn't some Russian marketing brochure. This quote comes from a former U.S. Pentagon analyst. That tells you that even experts on the U.S. side look at the Su-57 and go, wow. When it comes down to the raw performance of a fighter jet, Going fast, flying far, and carrying a heavy payload, the Su-57 is an absolute monster. Okay, so that's the Russian offer. Now let's pivot and look at the other side of this coin, the American pitch. And you've got to understand, what the U.S. is selling isn't just an airplane. It's an invitation to join an exclusive club, a whole ecosystem of military power. And that invitation comes in the form of the F-35 Lightning II. Now, the F-35 is a totally different animal from the Su-57. It's not designed to be the fastest or the most acrobatic dogfighter. Its superpowers are different. We're talking about next-level stealth, being practically invisible to enemy radar. And its brain, the sensor fusion, is so advanced it basically gives the pilot godlike awareness of the entire battlefield. It's less of a brawler and more of a flying quarterback, coordinating the whole team. And this really gets to the heart of it. This isn't just a simple choice between two planes. It's a clash of warfighting philosophies. Does India want the heavyweight boxer, the Su-57, that relies on pure speed, power, and reach? Or do they want the silent ninja, the F-35, that relies on information, stealth, and seeing the enemy long before the enemy ever sees them? This table really lays it all out, plain and simple. You can see the Su-57 takes the lead in speed. It's got two engines, which many pilots love for survivability. And look at that combat radius. It can fly much farther, a huge deal for a country as big as India. And the price? Significantly cheaper. But then, you look at stealth. And it's not even a contest. The F-35 is practically a ghost in comparison. And that last line says it all. Russia is offering full access to the tech. With the U.S., that's a hard no. But, you know... 
this decision isn't just going to be made based on a spec sheet. There's a lot of history here, both in the past and looking toward the future, that adds layer after layer of complexity to this choice. Because believe it or not, this isn't the first time India and Russia have tried to do this. There was a previous attempt, the FGFA program, that kicked off with a ton of hype back in 2007, only to completely fall apart, with India walking away in 2018. So what went so wrong? Well, it was a mix of things. The price tag ballooned to an insane amount. Russia started getting really cagey about sharing the critical tech that India wanted. And the Indian Air Force itself started having doubts, asking, hey, is this thing really as stealthy as you claim, and what's going on with the engines? So you can see why New Delhi might be a little cautious this time around. They've been burned before. And then there's another huge piece of the puzzle. India's own dream project, the AMCA. This is their ambitious plan to design and build their very own stealth fighter, completely from scratch. The ultimate goal here is total self-reliance. So any foreign jet they buy now is really just a stopgap, and they have to be really careful that it doesn't suck all the money and talent away from their own vital national program. So all of this brings us right back to the present day to this absolutely monumental choice. It's a true balancing act. They have to weigh their desperate needs for today against their ambitious goals for tomorrow and their legacy friendships against powerful new alliances. The path they choose will set their course for generations. So here it is, the final trade-off. If they go with Russia and the Su-57, they get the keys to the kingdom, complete tech transfer, a lower price, and a massive boost to their own industry. But they're also taking on risks with sanctions, a questionable supply chain, and a jet that's still relatively unproven. On the other hand, if they go with America and the F-35, they get the best stealth money can buy and are instantly plugged into the most powerful military network on Earth. The catch? The cost is astronomical, they get no real tech transfer, and they'll never have full sovereign control over their own planes. And that leaves us with a billion-dollar question, doesn't it? What does India value more? The promise of strategic autonomy and true self-reliance, built with help from a longtime partner? Or the undeniable power that comes from deep integration with the world's most advanced military ecosystem, led by the United States? Whichever path they choose, the answer is going to echo across the entire globe. Hey, thanks so much for sticking with us through that deep dive. If you found this breakdown valuable, do us a huge favor and hit that like button. Share this with someone you think would find it interesting. And of course, subscribe to the Global War Watch Network. We really want to know what you think the right move is for India, so drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And come join the conversation on our social media channels. All the links are waiting for you in the description. We'll catch you on the next one.